Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock. It's time for another video. And today I'm going to be talking about the Blackpool Magic Convention 2023. That's right, the Blackpool Magic Convention 2023. It's been, it's come, it's gone. And I have to tell you, it was awesome. I had an amazing time. Hello um, to everybody that I met. Thank you for uh, hanging out with me. Uh, thank you for coming over to the booth. Thank you for all of that. I saw some amazing stuff at the Blackpool Magic Convention this year. And what I wanted to do is a video of the 10 best things that I saw at the Blackpool Magic Convention 2023. Now, this is not products. These are things that I saw that I thought were pretty awesome. Okay, so these aren't products. I'm going to do another video on products. I'm going to do another video on uh, different tricks that I saw that I thought were fantastic. Absolutely 100%. But this is going to be a video all about the best things that I saw at the Backpool Magic Convention 2023. Uh, my advice to you is if you have not been, then please go. Because... Uh, it's just amazing. 2024, they've already announced that Matt King is going to be bringing his full Las Vegas show to Blackpool. That is going to be incredible. I think 2024 is going to be even bigger than 2023. But without further ado, let's break down the 10 best things I saw at Blackpool this year. So first up, one of the best things that I saw at Blackpool this year was just everybody hanging out and just having fun. There were so many people sessioning. There were so many people hanging around. There were so many people having a good time. I said it in my uh, survival guide to Blackpool that some of the best tricks that you see um, aren't actually in lectures. They aren't actually the tricks that you're going to buy from the dealers. Some of the best things that you're going to see are going to be tricks that somebody shows you in a bar somewhere or at a session, and you're going to see something that's going to blow your mind. And that is absolutely the case. I spent a lot of time sessioning and hanging out with people and chatting to people, and I was shown some amazing magic, some of which I had no idea how it worked. i got to tell you right now, the future of magic is in very good hands. It seems like the entire industry has become more and more creative. And for those people that says there's nothing new to be created in magic, think again, because there's a hell of a lot new to be created in magic just based on what I saw at this convention. So the first thing that I want to talk about is just everybody hanging around, having a good time and just showing each other magic. It was fantastic. Let's move on. Okay, like I said, these are in no particular order, but the next thing I'm going to talk about is the bear pit. Uh, I, was, I was at the bear pit, I saw all of the acts, and uh, I spent a lot of time with Ryland, obviously, because Ryland was one of the competitors on the bear pit, and uh, he, he needed my help to set up. It was manic, but that's, I remember doing the bear pit in 2020, just before the pandemic, and I was more nervous for doing the bear pit than I was for when I did my lecture the following two, the following convention two years time after the pandemic. I was more nervous for doing the bear pit because I think when you're doing the bear pit, people are coming in to watch who are considered to be some of the top close up magicians, working gigging magicians that are out there do their thing. And I think that there's a lot of expectations on the acts. And I saw a lot of acts that were very nervous before they came in. There were a lot of people a lot of the performers were really, really nervous, but the bear pit delivered as far as I'm concerned. Now, I've seen some chatter online from people that were saying it was badly organised and there was, uh, uh, you know, like a, a couple of tables that weren't gone to. But I think, to be honest, the whole point of the bear pit is it's meant to be this real world, chaotic, mad situation. We went in knowing, me and Ryan went in knowing that we'd be talking over each other. Uh, you know, there's, the acts are going to be talking over each other. There's one small room and they're right next to each other. It's why I got Ryland one of those mics. Um, sort of with a with a, a little microphone on his uh, on his uh, waistband because I just knew that would help him project his voice a little bit over the din that would be the bear pit. But yeah, I mean, standouts for me, Ryland obviously I think crushed it. I had a lot of people come up to me afterwards that said they couldn't believe how well he'd done. And uh, and also Nemed Phoenix I thought was amazing. Uh, to be honest, all of the acts in the bear pit were really, really great. I had a fun time watching the various different acts. Um, the other thing that I really liked, um, big shout out to Thomas Maloney and uh, Lucky Lee 
who didn't who were on one of the tables and they didn't have a performer come over to the table there was a bit of a mix up bit of a confusion or something like that and they just stood up and they started doing their thing and they just started performing instead and i think i believe that it got a standing ovation lee and thomas are amazing magicians anyway so i'm not surprised and i i really seriously think that they should do the bear pit themselves next year i really do but yes it's chaotic yes it's mad yes it's mental yes it's all over the place but uh, I really liked it. I thought that the uh, the bear pit was great. It made me very proud as a dad to see Ryland as the youngest ever person ever to go into the bear pit, do a, do a great job. So so there's that to it as well. Okay, so the next point or the next uh, the next thing that I saw at Blackpool that was awesome was the dealer hall. Now I've got to tell you right now, guys. The dealer hall at Blackpool is something special. It really is. I've been to every other convention around the world that you can possibly imagine. Magic Live has an amazing dealer hall. It really does. There's a lot of conventions out there that have really good dealer halls. They pale in comparison to Blackpool. I mean, they literally pale in comparison to Blackpool. You've got the big hitters. You've got the player. You've got the people that are going to be there that are always there that are at every convention. But then you've got smaller dealers that you might not have even heard of before. You've got random stalls that sell this stuff that you've never seen. You've got uh, it's just ridiculous. You know, the entire bottom level is covered in dealers. The top level is covered in dealers. Then you have to go out and have a look around the horseshoe because that's covered in dealers as well in the outside area. Where you walk in is covered in there are dealers everywhere. It is insane. It's ridiculous. Um, and I think we're very, very lucky to have the Blackpool Magic Convention in the UK and have it with such a big deal hall. I've you know spent more money this year than I expected that I was going to because I actually had a little time to go around the dealers, which I don't normally do. Um, but yeah, going around and, and, and seeing all of these weird and wonderful and fantastic tricks that were being released, by God, it was, it was, it was amazing. And I, I, just a little bit overwhelming as well. Like you could literally just go around and I, I, there, there are people that never went into a single lecture that never went into a single gala show. And all they did is they just went around the dealer hall for three days and they just went, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you want to see cool new magic, then that's the way to do it. Absolutely, 100%. But the uh, the dealer hall was uh, was next level. I was very, very impressed with the dealer hall. And if you've never been to Blackpool, one of the reasons to go is to go and check out the dealer hall. It will blow you away. Okay, so next point is Lloyd Barnes Lecture. Now, I'm biased. For sure, I'm biased. I know I'm biased. Lloyd is one of my best friends. But I know he was very nervous about doing this lecture. He'd only ever done one lecture before in his life. And, uh, you know, he, he had this lecture that he was doing at Blackpool. And he really seriously prepared for it with slides and everything. You know he was taking it seriously. And it was the opening lecture of the convention. Lloyd was convinced that nobody would be there. And in actual fact, there were thousands of people there. It was standing room only, um, which just shows how many people love Lloyd Barnes and the magic that he produces. Uh, having spoken to a lot of the people that went into the various different lectures throughout the whole thing, a lot of people said that Lloyd's was their favourite. And I can totally understand why. Everything that he did, he taught um, you could go away with practical applications. It wasn't like a dealer dem. He wasn't trying to sell anything. Um, it was just a really strong lecture. And I have to tell you, one of the biggest, one of the best things that I actually learned at the convention was his handling of Two Card Monty. If you weren't there, I believe he's going to be putting the lecture online on the Society of Secrets at some point. But the, uh, the, the handling that he has of the Two Card Monty takes an awesome trick and turns it into an absolute miracle status effect. I mean, it really does. The um, uh, the thinking behind what he's done with Two Card Monty, it basically turns the trick into any two named cards appearing in the spectator's hands. And since seeing that, I've actually done it a few times at various different places, including the House of Secrets, and it kills and it kills hard. One of the best take-homes I got was learning that from Lloyd Barnes' lecture. 
So uh, Lloyd's not all about gimmicks. You know, a lot of people go, oh, Lloyd's all about gimmicks. No, he's not. He's got practical material that works in the real world that's really well thought out. And that's a perfect example of something that's really well worked out, that works in the real world, that just takes a trick you already do and elevates it to the next level. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go and find a way to see this idea in action because it's brilliant. Okay, next point, uh, or the next thing that I really loved seeing at the uh, Black Hole Magic Convention 2023 was the House of Secrets. Now, I've been a big fan of the House of Secrets since it opened a year ago. Uh, Ryland is one of the resident stage performers there, as you guys probably know. And so I'm at the House of Secrets an awful lot. In fact, after the Black Hole Magic Convention ended, Ryland was there for another three days afterwards doing his show at the House of Secrets. Um, but it was great. You know, the, the thing with the House of Secrets is it's a nice little bar that's right next to the Winter Gardens. It's actually even kind of part of the Winter Gardens. And if you don't want to trek down to the Ruskin and you want a bit of a quieter drink where you can just sit down, you can actually hear yourself when you're sessioning with your friends. That's what the House of Secrets was there for. It was a great venue that really kind of helped make the convention as good as it was. I know there's a lot of people from speaking to people. There's a lot of people that go to the uh, that went to uh, the Blackpool Magic Convention, and maybe it was their first year there, and they were a little bit nervous. They were a little bit worried. Uh, they were a little bit overwhelmed, maybe, with the amount of people there, and they didn't want to go down to uh, the Ruskin because they thought they'd be overwhelmed. The House of Secrets was a nice, quieter, safer alternative. Um, and also a big shout out to the House of Secrets for making the Magic Podcast meetup so successful. It was a fantastic night. It really was. And, um, and, and that was down to the location that we picked. It was fantastic. We had a wonderful time and it was the perfect venue to have the Magic Podcast meetup. So, uh, you know, I have, to, I have to give a shout out to the House of Secrets. The House of Secrets is brilliant. Okay, so next up, I want to give a big shout out to Julio Monturo. So Julio Monturo is incredible. Um, I've ragged on him a bit and I've given a few of his products that came out over the last couple of years, not the best of reviews. And I've said he's very hit and miss. Some of the stuff he does is great. Some of the stuff he does is not so great. I stand by those reviews. I really do. However, meeting Julio at the uh, convention was one of the highlights of my convention, if not the highlight, uh, because his stand, his booth at the Black Cool Magic Convention was, in my opinion, the best booth there. It had the most practical visual material out of any booth that was that, that was at the Black Cool Magic Convention. I mean, it was ridiculous. Every trick was just mind-blowingly good, both in terms of method and practicality, but also in terms of the visual. It was fantastic. I had a, I had a great, I bought everything. I said to Julio, right, I'm coming over to see what you looked at, uh, what you've got, I've heard a lot of good stuff, and I bought everything. And his lecture, I did not go and see his lecture, but all anyone could talk about was Julio's lecture. And Ryland, who did go and see his lecture, said it was amazing. So I, I think he really hit it out of the park in this year's uh, Blackpool Magic Convention, which is fantastic. And he was so super nice. I mean, he had no reason to be nice to me because I've given him some scathing reviews in the past. But as soon as I walked over, he was like, Craig, come here. Big hug. Genuinely nice guy. Genuinely nice guy. And uh, yeah, his, his material, if this is the next year's worth of material coming out from Julio, we're in for some amazing magic coming out over the next year because all of his stuff was brilliant. And I am going to be reviewing some of it in the coming weeks and months. But genuinely, a highlight for me from this year's Blackpool Magic Convention was meeting, meeting Julio Monturo. Okay, so next up, I'm going to talk about something else that I saw at the convention. Uh, that involves Julio Monturo and also involves uh, Joel Miranda. Joel Miranda and Julio Monturo are teaming up to bring out a trick. And I can't say what the trick is. <coughs> they dragged me to one side in the Ruskin. That, well, actually, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I was in the gala show, uh, watching the gala show on um, one of the nights. And uh, I had a text message from Joel Miranda. And he said, hey... 
how you doing? You want to see something cool? I was like, yeah. And he said, me and, Joel, uh, me and Julio Monturo have got something extra special lined up. We'd love to show it you. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah, cool. I'd love to see it. And then text me later on saying, uh, meet us at the uh, Ruskin. Uh, you're going to love this. So I met them at the Ruskin and they took me to one sort of little area out the way. And when I was in that little area, Julio then proceeded to show me, and I swear down, what I think is one of the best card tricks I've ever seen. I'm not allowed to say anything. I know they were showing it to some big name magicians and getting quotes, and there were some very big name magicians that were blown away. From my point of view, I was blown away completely. Like I was literally right next to Julio, and he's doing this card trick, and I think he's going into a card trick I know. So he's going into something that I've seen before. And he goes into this card trick. I'm being very vague intentionally because I'm really not allowed to talk about it. But he goes into this card trick. And I think I know where it's going, right? And something happens. And it, it doesn't do what I thought it was going to do. It does it in a more flamboyant way. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's a nice crinkle. I don't know why you kind of text me and drag me over here for seeing that. But that's pretty cool. And then... They square on hit me in the nuts like they really did. They did this thing um, or Julio did this thing at the end, which just blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. I was blown away. I, like Genuinely speechless. Um, and you'll know that because they got me on camera reacting to the bloody trick. And the trick is absolutely amazing. It's one of the best tricks I've ever seen. Julio then showed me exactly what was going on with it. And I'm even more of a fan because it's completely practical. It's completely self-contained. It shouldn't be able to do what it does, but it is. And it's just great. It's great. I asked Joel and, and Julio when this is coming out, and I think they said April, May, June, sometime like that, that quarter. Um, trust me, keep an eye on a trick coming out by Julio Monturo and uh, Joel Miranda. I imagine it's a jo I imagine it... Uh, it looks very Joel Miranda in terms of how it's made. Um, I imagine Julio had the idea for the trick and got Joel to make it because um, it wouldn't be easy to make, I don't think. But it's coming out soon and it's brilliant. I'm going to get one. I'm going to get one for Ryland. I think it's awesome. I can't say anymore. I'm sorry to be that guy, but they made me promise not to tell anyone. So I wanted to let you know there's something big coming from them, but I can't really tell you what. But it is coming soon. So I keep checking the socials because it will be coming really soon from Joel Miranda and uh, Julio Montura. Okay, so next up, I want to talk about Matt Cluley. So Matt has risen to fame in the last six months. You know, Matt um, uh, has worked in my office for a few years now in the sales department. And as everybody knows, he's one of these guys that's super obsessive over magic. He loves um, reacting to magic. He loves good magic. He can't control his reactions. And as you know, he's gone and done some gigs and he's gone and done some stage shows and he's gone and worked with me and he's now gone and done a gig on his own and so on and so forth. He's done a great job, but uh, I made the decision to have a booth. Um, so Magic TV was going to have a booth at the Black Hole Magic Convention just with some of my products. And I made the decision to have this booth, which is fine. Um, and, and I knew that I wouldn't be on, able to be on it the whole time because I had obligations to work on the Alakazam stand. I had obligations to work on the, um, uh, uh, on, on, on a couple of different stands. And also I knew I'd be running around helping Ryland in the bear pit, getting ready for the podcast live. I knew I wanted to see Lloyd's lecture. There were a couple of other lectures that I wanted to see. So I knew it'd be, no, I wouldn't be on there the whole time. So I said to Matt, I said, Matt, you're going to have to run the booth for me. But that means that all of the 19 tricks that I'm going to be performing on that booth, you're going to have to, like, you're going to have to be the man. You're going to have to learn them and be able to learn them and perform them, not just perform them, perform them to the point that you can actually demo them and sell them. That's what you're going to have to do. And I, I gave him, like, 10 days, I think. So I gave him 10 days to learn all of the magic that I've brought out over the last two years. Everything from EDC to Quantum Deck to Chop to Keymaster. Even the stuff that's not mine but I, I kind of have a part of the project. So like Boombox and 
flip balm. I, was, I, I asked him to learn all of them. And anybody who's at the Blackpool Magic Convention will tell you that Matt did an incredible job, like an absolutely incredible job. He was a deming machine. One of my bugbears about Blackpool, one of the things that I am not so keen on, is that a lot of the dealers just can't be asked. You know, they just sit there with their products in front of them and they just go, yeah, there you go. This is what we got. You know, and it's kind of very uh, pants. To be perfectly honest, for want of a better word, it's very rubbish. Um, what what Matt did is he was deming constantly and doing a fantastic job with it as well. People would be coming up and I'd be seeing people around and they'd be like, yeah, I just bought this, I got it off Matt, just bought this, got it off Matt. And, you know, it, it, the booth did a lot better than it had any right to do as I wasn't on it as much as I would have liked to be. Um, and that is in big part to Matt and the fact that three months ago, he didn't even know how to do magic. And then 10 days ago, he didn't even know, know how to do any of my material. And now he does all of my material. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to invent some harder stuff. I think. I mean, I was just blown away. It was fantastic. So yes, uh, what can I say? Well, all I can say is that Matt did an incredible job. He did an absolutely amazing job. And watching him dem was one of the highlights of the convention to me. He did fantastic. Okay, so next up we have the one competition. So we have the one competition that came out on the Saturday night. And um, it was incredible. Like, it was a great competition. I know there's a question mark over who people think should have won or not. Uh, my attitude is the judges' decisions are final. It's not like they've got some idiots to judge the competition. I think Mike Cavani, um, Kevin James and Andy Nyman know what they're talking about, right? Uh, and it would have been a very difficult competition to judge because it was such an eclectic range of acts. But I think they did an amazing job. I think they did an absolutely fantastic job. And uh, I'm not going to say the right person won. I, I had some. I had one or two other people in. I had the first guy with all of the uh, fire and all of the cocktails and everything. I had that guy to win, or maybe Mario Lopez. But that's because that's my style of magic. Uh, Ryland who is now getting into manipulation like nobody's business, uh, had the manipulator down to win. Um, regardless, I think that the whole competition was a massive success. I know a lot of people were excited going into the convention to see the one competition, and I thought that it really did deliver. I thought that it was a very interesting cross-section of acts, and the fact that there was going to be one person that was going to be winning £30,000, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, a great hook, and I really hope that Blackpool do it again. I also want to give a big shout-out to the winner, and the reason I want to give a big shout-out to the winner, not just for being an amazing act and a well-deserved winner, but I was in the first gala show, and I don't know if people know, but in the first gala show, um, the, the, uh, the guy with the water that, that made the uh, balls appear out of the water, which was a great act as well, whatever system made that water appear got switched on somehow during the final act. The, 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 the act that won was the final act of the gala show. And it got switched on. So he was here doing some really intricate card manipulation uh, that I can't imagine how difficult it is. And now all of a sudden he's getting covered in water. I mean, that's a difficult situation to find yourself in, right? I mean, that's a really difficult situation. And we watched and he just continued to boss it. He just continued to do great. He continued to do great. He continued to do great. And, uh, and, and I imagine that some of his cards got wrecked. And the fact that he was able to pull himself together and get ready for the next gala show just an hour or so later just screams to the... Uh, professionalism of, of the act in question. So, um, yeah, uh, the one competition was a big highlight for me. I thought it was great. Okay, so uh, I've mentioned the goal. I've mentioned the one competition. I need to mention all the other shows. I didn't see all of them. I saw the main gala shows. I know that Ryland saw a couple of the shows that I didn't. I wasn't able to get to everything. But from everything that everybody's told me, Richard Jones smashed it out of the park. Romany smashed it out of the park. 
everybody did a fantastic job. Um, I very much like Kevin James and Friends. I thought that was a great gala show. Um, you know, Kevin never fails to disappoint and he had some fantastic acts with him. Gate and Bloom was the highlight for me on the first day. But then the second show on the Sunday was my favourite gala show, not just of the weekend, but it was my favourite gala show probably of all time in the entire history of going to the Blackpool Magic Convention. Like, I was just blown away. I was on the edge of my seat. The acts were fantastic. Everything was unbelievable. Um, Leah and her quick change um, act just gets better and better. I've always wanted to see that live. Having now seen it live, it's just as good live as it is on television. Man, it was just, it was just an incredible experience. It really was. They really delivered. Now, I know from being backstage, I wasn't backstage at this year's gala show, but I have been in the past, and I know just how stressful it is organising a, uh, a, a one of those gala shows. The amount of stuff that can go wrong and the amount of people that are running around, and from your point of view, from the front of the uh, house watching the show, um you know, that you see everything run seamlessly. It ain't seamless. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's happening behind the scenes. And the team at the Blackpool Magic Conven uh, you know, Convention team have to work very hard to put on the quality of the shows that they do. And, you know, the, 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 the people that moan, the people that are moaning about um, uh, about the price or whatever it may be, man, I mean, the the, the quality of the shows that I saw that night is more worth more than double the cost that we paid for Blackpool. Like, I'm just blown away by what I got and the price in which I paid. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The gala shows were fantastic. I'm going to do one extra little bonus point right now, which is I just want to say that one of the highlights for me were meeting everybody that attended either the Magic Podcast Meetup or the Magic Podcast Live or just bumped into me um, in the convention and said they love the podcast. Look, here's the thing. Myself and Lloyd have been doing this podcast now for over a year and it's very easy for me and Lloyd to sit there and just imagine that nobody listens to it because... Um, you know, we kind of just do it over Zoom and it gets edited and it gets sent up. And it's not like a YouTube video where you get lots of people commenting. There's nothing like that. Um, and so it's very easy for us to forget that there's so many people that listen to the podcast on a regular basis. But man alive, um, the amount of people that came up to me and said, oh, they listen to the podcast every week. Uh, they're a huge fan of the podcast. They they listen to it. We've had people, I, I bumped into people that said that they've come all the way from the other side of the world just to listen to the podcast. Just because they listened to the podcast, they decided to come to Blackpool. And that's absolutely amazing. So for everybody who's ever listened to the podcast that myself and Lloyd do, the Magic Podcast, uh, or for anybody that came up and said, hey, hi, I listen to the podcast, how are you doing? All of those people, I just want to say thank you very much. Uh, it's very humbling. It's fantastic. And I know I speak for Lloyd when I say that um, it's very much appreciated. One of the highlights for me, probably the biggest highlight, was listening and seeing and meeting all of the people that listen to the podcast on a regular basis and, uh, and, and and just hanging out with you guys. So thank you very much. So there you go, guys. That's another video in the bag. Thank you once again for joining me right here on Magic TV. Don't forget, you want to see more videos like this, all you got to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. If you haven't already done so, go check out The Netrix. It's www.thenetrix.com. That's www.thenetrix.com. I'm going to be back again tomorrow with another video. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of videos coming up over the coming weeks and months. But I want to say thank you once again for joining me thank you once again for being a part of magic tv i really appreciate it i'll see you again soon my name's craig from magic mm -hmm.